agora para a mesa Políticas de CIT e Avaliação de Impacto. Uma perspectiva das agências, parte 1. Para mediar esta mesa, convidamos, aqui ao meu lado, o superintendente da área de planejamento da FINEP, Rogério Medeiros. Vão compor este painel o Conselheiro for Science and Technology at Innovation da Noruega, Rur Andersen. E da ANI, Agência Nacional de Investigação e Inovação do Uruguai, Elisa Hernandes. Com a palavra, Rogério Medeiros. Boa tarde a todos. É, eu sou o superintendente da área de planejamento da FINEP. É uma das áreas que tem a difícil tarefa de fazer o processo de aprendizagem institucional com os programas e projetos financiados pela FINEP, e, portanto, com o programa de avaliação de resultados e impactos do, dos programas da FINEP. Vamos dar, dar continuidade a, essa, a esse nosso seminário, que está de muito bom nível, e agora vamos trazer duas perspectivas de agências que muito interessam a FINEP, é, eu queria aproveitar a oportunidade também para agradecer o pessoal da FINEP, que esteve te, envolvido na organização desse evento, o pessoal da área de planejamento, a Adriana, o Eduardo, o pessoal da área de comunicação, que também que tá, ajudou bastante a, a colocar o seminário de pé. Então, nós vamos trazer agora duas perspectivas de agências, e, como eu disse, isso é de grande interesse para a FINEP. Uma parte da... Nosso, nossos irmãos da Noruega, é, que tem, com a qual a FINEP tem parceria, e também com o Uruguai, da ANI, que recentemente tivemos aqui a presença da Ximena, que a, apresentou também algumas perspectivas sobre o trabalho desenvolvido é, pela Agência de Inovação do Uruguai. E hoje teremos aqui a Elisa Hernandes, que vai trazer um, algumas perspectivas para nós. Então, vamos dar início a esse, essa sessão, e eu vou pedir a Elisa, então, para começar a apresentação. Ok, good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation to the seminar. Um, I'm representing the Evaluation and Monitoring Unit, a National Research and Innovation Agency. And um, this is a great opportunity to talk about our institutional experience in evaluation, uh, particularly our um, main challenge and um, our lesson learned in the process. To put into context, ANIS was founded in 2006 as a key player to foster and support research and innovation. And their objectives are prepare and implement science, technology, and innovation instrument and programs, promote articulation and coordination, and contribute to development of an effective monitoring and evaluation of program systems under the objective three the evaluation and monitoring unit carry on its activity. Oh. Um, in these 10 years, more, uh, ANI has more than 12,000 proposals received, more than 5,000 proposal support, and two, um, $180 million financed. Within the, within the structure of the agency, The evaluation and monitoring unit was created with the following competencies. Monitor the instruments of the agency and evaluate the result and impact. Design control mechanisms of program and instrument executed by ANI. And develop national indicators of science, technology, and innovation. We are six. This is our team. Jimena Uset is the master manager of the unit. Daniel Buxton and I, we are specialists in quantitative methodologies. And Lucia Monteiro is a specialist in mixed method and, evalu and qualitative evaluation. 
we are the re-evaluator team, so we are responsible by uh, the, the, um, the methodology, design collect, um, design sample, collect the data, and analysis and report. Mariana Vaz is our um, database assistant, and Martin Perial Peralta work with um, uh, indicators of science, technology, innovation, and in monitoring. Well, this is um, uh, some concepts uh, uh, to introduce. Um, once the first, uh, during the first uh, years of the agency, we worked in uh, we were our work in the unit was to focus on monitoring. Why? Because we need to design our key indicators. Um, or design our, our um, information system uh, and analyze and report um, about, uh, about our instruments. Once the first generation of the instruments was completed and um, the, the time needed to capture the effect of the instrument was according to the theory, theory we began to develop our first impact evaluation. Uh, well, evaluation analyze the effect of any or any program of a set of results and provide feedback about the program. Um, we think for us, monitoring and evaluation are complementary because monitoring allows to get information that is very useful, very useful in the process to evaluate. Well, this is our. Um, Something to talk about this. Um, this is our monetary and evaluation strategy and the states of design. We um, think about evaluation question, we define our methodo methodology, and we um, uh, plan and budget the evaluation activity. So, uh, once um, High quality information is, uh, is are the key input for evaluation. So, the, um, after the implementation, we estimate the baseline of the program. During the implementation, the um, programs are monitored. After the um, one, uh, once the programs are um, completed, we do we make a result evaluation. Um, with uh, through an export survey to the beneficiaries, and to try uh, we try to um, capture the F medium and long term effect with an impact evaluation. All we aim to generate input for design or redesign program. Um, finally, it is important to take in account the concept where develop are the uh, where the policies are developed with the estimation of national science, technology, uh, and innovation indicators. Well, this is our information system. System We have information about researchers, projects, and firms um, at different stages, when they are applicants, when they are beneficiaries, at a national level. Um, for the researchers, we have information fr um, in the CBU. CBU is a lar lar large database where the, um, of curriculum vitae, where the researchers record their scientific uh, career, including scientific output. Uh, for, the, for the firms, we have information in an innovation survey and in that is. Um, carry out in collaboration with National Statistics Institute, and we have information in a mini innovation survey that we applied for the applicants, our firm applicants. And, when, uh, and we have information about the process in uh, several uh, in systems uh, developed internally by ANI. For example, postulation system, uh, operational system, that is HESPRO, um, and others. Um, this is information is used for monitoring, and this is information is used for, eval 
for evaluation. For evaluation. And this, and this is information for national indicators of science, technology, and innovation. Okay. Within the activity of monitoring, the informal reportation, the informal the information report is very different. Um, for each and instrument, we report number of approved projects, number of signed projects, number of club projects, amounts of money, finance and, execute, and execute, management time, for example, time to evaluate, and deviations. This is a traditional monitor. Uh, but with, uh, in addition, we, are, um, we report um, ca characteristics of, si of firm, like size, age, easy sector, foreign capital, e about economic performance, and information for the researchers, sex, age, area knowledge. All this information este, is in three, are in three products. Uh, annual monitoring reports. We do se uh, we make semi-annual monitoring reports and report to financial institutions uh, too. All this information is very useful when we are here. In uh, we are evaluation <laughs> in evaluation uh, for each instrument and it develop um, a strategy evaluation evaluation that combine different methodologies. Uh, impact evaluation, result evaluation, and qualitative evaluation. Impact evaluation is an econometric analysis and based on the measure of the average effect of the treated group on a set of indicators. But it has a problem. It requi requires a contrafactual. For us, we define that our contrafactual is uh, our applicant who have not received support. Well, in the case of result evaluation, we, uh, we do an statistic analysis from information of the export survey applied to the beneficiaries. And in a quality evaluation, um, we, um, we um, uh, the information of the server is deep with qualitative tools. One, uh, one important thing is that the focus of our, our work is impact evaluation, but not is not um, possible apply always, always. because uh, last year we did we did an evaluation about uh, um, our one, one program um, that the aim is the linkage between academics and firm, but uh, the size of the treatment treatment treat group treatment group was so small that it was not possible to apply econometric techniques. So we did result evaluation and qualitative evaluation. The, the most important thing to this is to be creative and flexible in, and in the methodology we, we you are applying. Well, in impact evaluation, the first step is to define a theory of change. What is, is the causal chain? The story, the storyline of the program, that we, which help us to define our outcome variables. In the case of the film, our outcome variables um, are um, uh, different. <laughs> uh, we have um, um, impact in different uh, variables. Um, the first step is analyze. Um, the impact of any program in a set of uh, variables that are um, linked to uh, our inputs of innovation. For example, private investment on innovation activities or investment in, in R&D. Is the, is the discussion about if the program has, has, has crowding in or crowding out? The second step is analyze where the um, is the any firm are more innovative that they are uh, that are in the control group or are more innovative in products or innovative process that the firm that are not supported by any and the, the um, 
the, the third step is analyzed in productivity, sales, employee, and sport. Are variables um, linked to productive performance. For the researchers, when I like bibliographic, pro bibliographic production, technical production, human resource training, and personal qualification. Once uh, the data required to conduct an evaluation, an impact evaluation, as available, and the theory is defined, the next step are validate data and potential attrition, check the internal validity of the data. In this point, we do balancing check or placebo analysis. Well, the, uh, we estimate the impact and we report and we make a report with results. We use different uh, econometric, econometric techniques. I don't. <laughs> The, I don't, it's not necessary to speak about them, about them but the, the most important thing is that we apply at least three methods for each uh, outcome variable to ensure the roughness of the result. In, when we are in uh, result evaluation, we apply an sports RV where the beneficiaries established, where the, established, where the projects allow them to achieve a set of results in different dimensions. In the case of films, we um, ask about uh, health improvement in technology, uh, techno productive aspect, in commercial aspect, if they modify here, you know, uh, um, if they modify um, her innovative behavior, if they are more, um, um, more uh, productive, productive. And in the case of researchers, we ask about insertion in national and international academic network, uh, labor insertion linked to the research, contribution to develop online or research, age in the variation, consolidation of researcher team. And both we analyze the main success of the project and the, and the role of the ANI in the project. In this, in this methodology, we are consider, considering the beneficiary self-perception. When we are doing qualitative evaluation, for us, it's a complement. The re, we complement the result obtained, obtained in the qualitative one, conducing different techniques that unpack key aspects of the topic under research. We use an approxim of approximation of mean method. We use semi deaf interview, uh, de deaf interview or semi structured interview and focus group. And we do a speech analysis, we contrast trajectory, event transition, and main typology. We have uh, 11 products, evaluation that are uh, uploaded into the website, website ANI, the ANI website. Um, and our lesson learned in the process. Well, uh, the first point that this is important to plan for impact. Why? Because um, it, is ne ne it is needed to encourage the development of an explicit theory of the change, ensure that the key variables for evaluation are collected, and ensure the quality of the, inform of the information. Other point is that any information system need re, uh, further refinement to maximize the use of the administrative data and statistics. In this point, the we need to make a balance between quantity and quality of the information request, taking into uh, account the process the processing capacity. Well, other point that is very important that it is convenient to realize both quantitative and qualitative evaluation to better understand causes and effects will lead to better policy recommendations. Our main challenge is um, triangulation. Well, evaluation findings are strengthened when several pages of evidence point in the same direction. Better still, if different data sets and approaches can be used and come to broader broadly the same conclusion. Other point, in addition, uh, it is important to take account the, uh, the, the evaluation opportunity. Sometimes the program make a new call and the evaluation has not been completed. 
Uh, in this point, we need to make a balance between the best time to evaluate according to the methodology and the use information for design a redesign instrument. And other lesson is that it's important to take account the cost of beneficial of evaluation. Consider the consider in this point we need to consider the cost of producing an evaluation, surveys, a technical team versus the benefit of evaluation and a small program. It is a problem, a problem that Uruguay that um, has uh, um, a little, uh, a small uh, size of the treatment uh, and the control group. Um, well, uh, it is important to pay attention to communication of the result. Um, the main challenge for us is a sad format, format to the audience. We have different end users of the report, techni technicians, policy makers, researchers, and publish in general. And we need to create appropriate reproducts for each of them. We need to have different uh, um, products of communication in different languages. It's not, it's not easy. And finally, uh, but not less important, is the focus. The focus is produced inputs for design and redesign program. And the main challenge is use finding creativity to improve impact on impact evaluation. O surpreendente aqui é que a, a agência de inovação do Uruguai, ela nasceu já com o conceito de avaliação é uma agência que completa 10 anos e já começou com um departamento e um time bastante representativo de pessoas qualificadas para fazer essa avaliação. Vamos dar sequência ao painel, passando para o Runa, que é da Innovation Norway, e vai trazer para nós as perspectivas uh, da inovação na Noruega e, e os aspectos relacionados à inovação. Sinep and the Brazilian Academy of the Sciences, Dr. Sintra and Dr. Davidovich. Uh, I'm very well pleased and honored to be here today to present the Norwegian system of uh, research and development and innovation. Um, we have been working and have a dialogue with FINEP for some years. And then we found out that the dialogue should stop and we should start doing something. And we uh, then implemented uh, some uh, workshops and we have conferences together and we have calls together, and it starts to, to, to be a very good uh, partnership. So thank you very much, and I would like to open that to see that here. Um, uh, I'm here to also representing both Research Council Norway and Innovation Norway, and I will explain a little bit the difference between the two in my presentation. And we have tried to make our measurements clear to our Norwegian stakeholders. Uh, because we are getting constantly more money, so we have to also to constantly tell the politicians that it is a good idea. We have uh, depend on, and we have been important for us to create an environment of national consensus in this area. That, of course, means that we have to substantiate that public money is well spent. So that is basically what my presentation will be. Uh, but for I, I will go on saying who we are and what we do, because that is what we are measured on directly, uh, where we measure and what we find, some selections. Uh, Innovation Norway, I will switch, you will see the Innovation Norway logo and the Research Council logos, I will switch between the two. Uh, our purpose is actually to make a, a competitive Norwegian industry. And the main goal is three things, and these are the ones we are measured on. It is to create, uh, let's see if this is, uh, create successful entrepreneurs, is more enterprises with capacity of growth, and to uh, create innovative business clusters. Because uh, business clusters in Norway, it seems as one of the major um, polit politic politicians areas for, for strengthening Norwegian industry. It's a major political uh, movement there. Okay, yeah. Innovation Norway, we 
we gave us roughly 6,000 grants and loans uh, every year. We get roughly 10,000 applications. And we do 3.5 billion NOx as loan and 2.5 billion as grants. So we're those both dealing with grants and loans. And in addition to that, we also do a lot of services to more to protect our grants and financing. We do competence building activity in companies. We do advice as advisors. Uh, and we do our network in itself. We do network and we create networks in within Norway and internationally also. Um, our advice is where is we are because we have a distributed system. We are 18 district offices in Norway, so we are always close to the industry in Norway, and we have offices in 35 countries around the world. So that means that we are close to markets and close to companies. And for Norway, it's very important because we, for many of the technologies, there is no home market because we are just five million people. So we need to go out very soon for technology companies. The Research Council of Norway, they uh, support or finance higher education sector, research performing organizations, and industry. Uh, they only give uh, grants. They are not uh, giving loans. In dollars, uh, in dollars, in the Norwegian NOx is at um, 2.5. So I pay 2.5 NOx for every real. Huh? Every real, yes. So it is uh, for five million people. It's uh, quite some uh, some money. Uh, it's small. Uh, it's small with uh, an American context and Brazilian context. But for five million people, it is a given, obviously, priority in the government. Yeah. And we are funded by 15 ministries. Uh, so it is uh, one, it's, I think it's very seldom that one institution is actually at the same time funded by 15 ministries. Um, we are equally giving money to research institutes and universities. And we are also giving half of that to directly to industry. And the money to industry is multiplied. I will show a little bit later how the m government, the industry money is being multiplied in, in, in the market. The funding schemes of the Research Council, uh, this is an overview, and it shows that the Research Council within this organization has funding mechanisms to facilitate the transfer of, of academic knowledge to the industry and for the industry to communicate the need for R&D and the, and the priorities. There's a number of programs and calls are based on this dialogue and are meant to facilitate it. It will be more or less forced to facilitate this dialogue. So here you see this, um, here you see these centers of excellence is here. They are very research based on this side. They're very industry based on this side. And you have also then in the middle some transfer programs that is actually meant to transfer uh, dialogue between academia and the industry. And uh, just to uh, give an example of all the programs, uh, this is some of the programs. Um, they are supporting increased innovation and technology content industry, and it's listed here. The list is just to point out that the funding programs to motivate all parties and increase R&D and innovation in industry is a substantial part of Research Council activities. We do not believe that this dialogue between the academia and the industry is going to happen by itself. It has to be uh, promoted and it has to be funded and has to be challenged because uh, to have academia go into industry and vice versa is an exercise. Yes. Uh, the, the call we had with FINEP is taken out of this Petromax 2 program. And uh, I will show a little bit later the results from the BIA, which is one of the biggest research council programs that is meant to facilitate uh, R&D and innovation in industry. And then we come up with a small system. It's our commercialization network. And we can say that it's rather over, oversimplified way that the Research Council of Norway is pushing the academic knowledge towards the industry and that the in industry Innovation Norway is pushing the industry towards the academia. So we meet somewhere in the middle, uh, also with funding and activities. Um, 
And it's a rather fine-tuned innovation and commercialization network. And in this network, you also find a lot of other players with which we welcome private and public that contribute to the EV innovation in this rather interdependent system. And this interdependency uh, of functions sometimes make it complicated to have the exact effect measurements of the individual participants. So we are very hard working on actually getting this more in precise the measurements because when all these players are acting, you don't know who is resulting in what. From what. Yeah, from what. Uh, to give my contribution to this seminar is quite timely, uh, as we have recently made an effort to find out more about the effects and impact of our funding. The general belief is that FOU uh, R&D invests lead to economic growth, but we have felt the need to understand the black box of research better both as a response to the ministry's funding, our support to research, and to understand better the mechanisms ourselves in our funding policies and to the beneficiaries, and the interaction between private and public efforts. The challenges of tomorrow are complex, uh, cross-sectorial, and interdisciplinary, and dealing with them all will require an organizational form that can accommodate integration and diversity and have consequences for funding activities. And then a little bit on what we measure. Um, we are measured on our objectives. And for Research Council, they are wider than for Innovation Norway, but they are greater scientific merit. They are greater value creation within the trade and industry and they are address more major societal challenges. And I can come a little bit on that because that, that includes actually to strategic area in, within this uh, target area is to modernize public sector and improve and more efficient welfare, health and social services. That is always on the Norwegian agenda and it is, yeah, it will be always there. It will never end that uh, project. A well-functioning research system is a target area and also social so sound advice, which is advice to our ministries. So we are also advising our ministries on uh, research questions. Um, for uh, Innovation Norway, it is simpler, easier. Well, in the beginning, yeah, almost <laughs> It is more successful entrepreneurs. That is what we are measured. We are created to do exactly that. We are more companies with growth potential and we are going to have more innovative business clusters. And th these are connected to key performance indicators and where the effects are measured. Um, and we have discussed this for a very long time because uh, since 2000 I was entering the system and we wanted to know the effects of what we are doing. And we didn't know exactly what to do. In 2012, the, our parliament asked us to do something with it, about it. So uh, we made uh, then in 2003, the year after, 13, a new management governance system for Innovation Norway was in place. And then the year after, we contracted uh, the Statistical Central Bureau of Norway to actually do it. Because we wanted to have an independent body to measure us so we couldn't be blamed to, to, to change the figures. So Statistics Norway was hired to, to, uh, to do this job and we hoped for the best uh, for the results. And uh, they have um, received a list with all firms that we have support. Uh, they do a quality check, they do a, what we call look-alike firm, and they do a, uh, compare it in a using a diff and diff, it's a kind of a matched diff and diff, uh, they tell me. Uh, I'm not a specialist in this statistical analysis, uh, but it, the diff and diff is also what the Uruguay uh, colleague here is talking about, so I guess the statistical method is basically the same. That's a good, uh, good uh, indication. And uh, then we are getting the results. So if a firm has received support from more than one uh, program, we try to choose the program that was the biggest one. But it is a measurement problem for us because we seldom do one thing with a company. So we don't know 
where the effect lies. And so how are measured? We, well, we sent 7,000 uh, enterprises into the Statistical Center Bureau of Norway. We have a control group and we have three year period to, to evaluate the movements over time. And the indicators are things that are easy to find in the statistical data. It's uh, sales and turnover. They are value added. They are number of employees. They are value added per employee and return on total assets. So this is things that you can find today. So uh, we needed something to explain to our politicians today. So <laughs> we took the figures we had. It's a very practical uh, solution. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, we hoped that an innovation Norway company was above this uh, control group, that it hasn't been on the lower side of the control group. And we were lucky because they basically were there. <laughs> 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 they should be. <laughs> Uh, and also the Statistics Norway has made a lot of um, reports which is available on the net, can be downloaded. Uh, if you Google, uh, then I need my uh, spectacles. If you Google the, um, say that, F, uh, the effect of firm performance of support from Innovation Norway is on the net. It is there in English, so it's easily accessible. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of these um, e equations there with a lot of assumptions and everything can be go after. But it is good uh, also that we have a, made us a consensus in Norway that actually nobody has wanted to challenge this methodology of statistics Norway. So there has been kind of a consensus that this is it. And that's good. We also have a wider scope put on uh, this in the middle, which is said that the effects on innovation and value creation of selected instruments of industrial policy, so they are wider, but I'm afraid they are in Norwegian, so it's more or less accessible, but it's also available electronically. And we have looked into patents, uh, how our activity results in patents. And then what we find. And this, let me present my results here. It is important to note that we do other measurements uh, and evaluation in addition, in addition to Statistics Norway. We get information from our own database, from questionnaires, and we also have from time to time separate evaluations on initiated by various funding programs. And we are also the subject of research projects from our universities. So we are never left alone, and we are always above the radar on, uh, on researching on our activities. Uh, this is, uh, first, before I go into the finding of Statistic Norway, let me start with an important finding that we extract directly from our database. We have redone our database to, to get easy access to these figures, and that is what we call the trigger effect. The Norwegian government give us uh, 3.7 billion ox. And we are also a banking operation, so that means that we add 3 billion more into the market. And how we do the funding means that we also get another million, so to we are supplying the industry with 20 million ox every year. Because here we are getting how we demand, we are not financing the total project, but we are asking the banks and the, uh, the, the venture capitalists and investors to participate. So that, in all that, then adds to 20 billion. And that is a good, because we get a kind of, um, um, that we are involved in the project that reduce the risk, so it attracts the investors, venture capitalists, and banks. So they feel more safe, because we, when we measure our results, you can see from the next slide, uh, no, the next one. And, uh, the evaluations from Statistics Norway for Research Council is actually that the one million spent gives 1.8 million in, in, in value creation per year. It adds 1.2 to 1.7 million, uh, so seven employees. We find that um, the, the support above 1.5 million is, is more higher, give higher effect, and that the net return of profit public finance R&D investments are 7%. So we get an answer that it works and that the government get back the money. And that is what I want to know. Uh, for one a separate funding program, 
uh, which was B, I, I mentioned it before. It is in the strategic area of improved interaction and transfer of knowledge between R&D environments and trade and industry. We, we ask how probable is it that R&D project will get results that can be implemented and be useful in the company? It, most people say it's very probable and quite probable. So there's actually it adds a lot of competence in the, in the industry and it is a very demanding project. We have a rating from seven down to one and only very few uh, co uh, projects rated six get uh, approval. It's you're up in the seven, maybe some six to, to get, ac to get a, a priority in this program. It is a very demanding program. And then we come to the overall effects of Innovation Norway. Uh, we can see that uh, we perform better, our companies, our companies perform better than the control group. We, our companies are performing in turnover 12.3 percentage points better than the control group. They have a higher value added and they have a slightly higher productivity. Uh, we have, since we are measured on both entrepreneurs and companies for growth, we measure b both these, uh, these uh, objectives. And you see that the sales turnover are increased higher in our own supported companies than the, the, uh, the control group. So it's again a confirmation that giving money to the Re-Innovation Norway is a good business for the government. And that is what we need to tell them again. The other objective of Innovation Norway is to work with clusters. Uh, it's a very central part of our industrial policy and it has been very successful. They also, we see that overall the companies in the cluster are working, performing better than companies outside the cluster, both over a three year period and over a nine year period. And they are also, they are also higher up in value creation. And it's uh, very important for us to have uh, clusters in the industrial policy and the results have been very positive and it gets an unanimous political support, whoever is in government. If it is from the right wing or left wing, it is a consensus that cluster is a good, uh, good solution and efficient one. Um, for the clusters, we, we give 140 plus 23 million every year. This money is supporting 36 clusters. There are 2,070 companies participating and 366 RD&E educational institute. That means everything that is in Norway, I guess. I didn't know we had so many. And it's, it's, it's triggered a lot of joint activities between the companies. And this happens without any government interference. It happens on its own. It is the energy in the cluster that is the engine that triggers this activity. And so the, the end of the day, the cluster companies, they have a significant higher growth in turnover and number of employees than companies that is not in the cluster. We also ask uh, the companies if how they feel it is to be in a cluster. You have a tea, it's going slow. Battery. There we go. We ask them which and how large effects do the companies expect from cluster participation in the coming years. They ex expect eff effects on competition, that's the turnover, profitability, and employees. And you see that the small sum effect and large effect is, is dominating. So also the companies themselves, they feel that it works, not only the, the, the government. And also, uh, I'm not going to show this except for as a, and starting to, to round up a little bit. And because we're funding, we are sel very seldom we do only one thing for funding. We also give a lot of services and we have problems to measure what is uh, uh, attributed to what services. But the, the total, uh, total uh, result is very good. So we, we are looking more into this to understand how to direct our policies better to support the industries. This is a special funding program. 
And he, up to, it's only 3% who says that to a small degree, it doesn't lead to competence. So it is a very competence building program in Innovation Norway. And we also have this combination of funding and advice that we do. It is uh, quite a general consensus that the know-how is increasing in the companies. Because we, we work very hard to actually to make the companies uh, uh, be able to do something with the R&D results coming from universities. You can't only prepare the universities to go to the industry. You also have to prepare the industry to take in what is coming from the universities. And this is what's happening here. So we'll have some sad challenges. Uh, the hard and soft support and effects, we don't know what is causing what. The interaction between different programs and schemes, it's seldom that a company in Norway has only one interaction with one program. Long-term effects and impacts, spillover, wider impacts, what is the oil and gas technology doing in the medical, how is the, the, our, the oil and gas activities real-time, on-time, uh, uh, remote operation, how can that be gone into other uh, sectors? and the amount and time of the support. The Statistic Norway, they uh, also list up a problem, list of problems. How long does it take for before participation in a program has an effect? How patient must we be? How long does the effect last? And how should we treat repeated support and support that lasts for more than one accounting period? Because our statistics are in the accounting period. When done, does one treatment stop and another start? So this is what we're working on now and trying to make improve our measuring systems. But uh, the first goal is to kind of make the politicians agree that we are, that our assistance is a good thing. <laughs> and uh, that is what we have been done, able to do. And uh, that we, the reason for our mission and that we solve it in a way that gives results, yes, and it gives us consensus and legitimacy related to our role in industrial development, innovation and R&D policies. It gives the project we fund increased credibility amongst our stakeholders as investors, banks, and venture capital environments. We increase the probability of success and make it possible for a larger number of Norwegian SMEs to take on projects that are in a way bigger than themselves for foster increased growth and competitiveness. So that is then how we look on the company and the project, that we are trying to put the project and the company in the middle and we are supporting them with all kinds of uh, services around. Uh, and then I think that was all I had to say so far. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Obrigado, Rune, pela apresentação. Eu acho que nós tivemos duas apresentações interessantes, é, baseadas em metodologias con é, conhecidas, não tem nada de novo. Elas apenas demonstram que a organização das metodologias e a flexibilidade, conforme comentou a Elisa, são necessárias para você ajustar e recalibrar os programas e as, uh, e as iniciativas de inovação, que são sempre muito criativas e sempre... Mas o importante aqui, eu acho que é, é ter uma duração de programas de incentivo de longo prazo. A gente já viu na parte da manhã, nas exposições, que a inovação tem um efeito de mais longo prazo. A gente tem não só os resultados imediatos, como também os impactos que poderão vir alguns anos depois de que terminou aquele projeto. Alguns efeitos de causalidade são difíceis de você saber de qual programa exatamente nasceu essa iniciativa. No caso da Noruega, eles têm um interessante programa de clusters, que realmente é muito interessante, faz todo sentido... É uma lição que a gente também já fez no Brasil, com os arranjos produtivos locais, é, mas aí, como sempre no Brasil, a gente faz, depois a gente deixa de fazer essa metodologia. Acho que no caso da Noruega tem um efeito muito multiplicador. No caso é, 
da área de petróleo, que a gente teve a oportunidade de visitar lá hum, recentemente. Hum. É muito interessante como é que o ambiente de negócios é, evolui quando ele está territor territorialmente envolvido no mesmo espaço de organização. Muito bem, são várias assim, é, experiências interessantes. Eu gostaria agora de abrir, então, para a gente as questões, se os microfones puderem ser disponibilizados aqui, em primeiro lugar, aqui, por favor. É, por favor, é, Meu nome é José Roberto Boasson de Marca, é, aqui da Academia de Ciências. É, me desculpe. Alô, 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 alô. Ok. Ah, uma pergunta para a Elisa, e é simples, é só clarificação. Você botou, colocou lá, e eu, eu não entendi direito, o orçamento da, é da agência, ou é o orçamento para programa de inovação, 280 milhões de dólares, esse, esse, é, é isso mesmo? O orçamento é 280 milhões de dólares que vocês têm para gastar em programas? Ok, sorry, in English. So, uh, you, you had a number in your presentation, uh, 208 million dollars, uh, which I guess was the Asia's budget, but is it true? Yes, yes, yes. This for only for the programs or the overall? Um, for all. Still, it's a lot of money for a country, three million people only, 3.4. Yes, yes so I think uh, so. Yeah, it's much more than we have in Brazil. Thank you. I'm uh, uh, Luiz Fernando Leite, da Escola de Química, da UFRJ. Uh, uma pergunta para as agências aí que estão fomentando né, inovação, né? se esses programas aí suportados né, nas diferentes áreas, é, se são realizados workshops entre os grupos financiados, né, para você tirar lições aprendidas, é, ver gargalos, dificuldades, se vocês promovem o contato também entre, com, entre os clientes, né, não só indústria e, e academia, mas entre... A, as pessoas que estão ali trabalhando numa determinada área, né? desenvolver a tecnologia numa determinada área. Essa é uma pergunta. Ah, eu tenho uma segunda pergunta, que aí, no caso, seria pro, a experiência da Noruega. Você solicitou aí que é, pretende aumentar né, o, o funding, aumentar o, o orçamento né, para estimular a inovação, né? a partir do momento que você começa a, a reduzir os, o risco dos projetos. Né? É, então, eu pergunto que metodologias vocês estão usando para avaliar esses riscos e se vocês usam alguma coisa como maturidade, medir a maturidade tecnológica dos projetos, porque quanto mais você se aproxima do meio produtivo, você tá, o projeto é menos embrionário, menor, re, normalmente o menor é o seu risco. Né? Uh, about the advice to uh, the applicants, uh, we are in, uh, it's a little bit different how Innovation Norway do it and the uh, Research Council do it. Because when you do a call, you have to treat everybody the same way. So when there is a call, there's a lot of preparatory meetings that people can participate in that prepare them and advise them on how to make uh, uh, an application and what should be a good conditions for get a successful uh, result out of the applications. So that is the, the research council. Because when the applicate, when the, when the, when the, uh, when the shamada is there, you can have to treat everybody the same way. You can't give somebody the information and somebody not. So that's very sensitive. The Innovation Norway, we don't make calls. We treat the company continuously. And we are in very close dialogue with them all the way, from the sending the, uh, the, the proposal for support until we sign the agreements. And we can do, we will look upon the company as um, what they are missing. I mean, a company is only its own knowledge. And to be successful, they may have other input that to make su successful projects. So we add activities, sometimes we add the budgets because they have forgot to take out in the important aspects of the, of, the, of the projects. And we follow them closely. We have meetings with them regularly, especially the bigger projects. 
and give them advice. And also before we give the grants, we can give them mostly, we give them conditional grants that they have to increase their capacity or knowledge or competence in the board because many of the startups companies, they are mother, father, and some friends and fools that are kind of uh, the owners. So we require them to add the, the competence in the board that can follow directly and continuously the company. So we do this in kind of various ways. And we can do this in Norway because we have 18 district offices all over the country. So we are very close to the companies all the time. It of course, it has been very difficult for us to do this if we had been only in the capital and try to have this dialogue with companies all over the, the Norway. It's, it's a small country, but it's very lengthy and uh, logistically com uh, complicated. Yeah. Uh, was that uh, the risk evaluation? Yes. Oh, the, yeah. The the research council is using international advisors and to 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 check how new is it, what is the risk research uh, content. They send it out to a network of uh, evaluators to to evaluate. Uh, and also some companies, for instance, Statoil is part of it sometimes if they're all oil and gas, and if it is very market-oriented, uh, it is also the, 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 the market players, the companies that are kind of into the group as well. So we have panels also, uh, especially bigger projects, and, but otherwise it is more the knowledge and competence of Innovation Norway, how to do, to, we have seen a lot of projects, you know, <laughs> so, so we, we have a kind of a feeling that something is missing. So. Uh, we have a credit committee for the bigger projects. There's a collegium, collegium with a lot of competence and backgrounds that evaluate the bigger projects. And then also we do panels, which is a part of the credit committee's decision. So we, 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 we and also we know that we are very carefully looking on the team that is going to do the job. Because we know that a bad team can destroy anything. And a good team can sell or will save anything. So we are very in dialogue with, with kind of what is the competence of the company that we are supporting. And now that we have received the statistics that actually our companies are performing better, we have also better communication with the banks and the investors and the venture capitalists to kind of feed the money because we are lowering the risk. Also by funding. I mean, when you have a risky projects and don't give loans, you reduce the risk. At a certain time, it is acceptable for the owners to, to take on the risk. Yeah. Because of a board and a, the directors in a company, they have a long list of projects. And at a certain time, you have a cutoff. And below that, you are not realizing the projects. So if you want a faster development or, or into a kind of a technology that is more socioeconomic, also important for the country to have it develop. I had a small project that was small because it was a, a nano helicopter. And nobody thinks that we could do it. But I said that uh, it was five million knocks. And uh, I said, uh, wrote that my conclusion that if anybody in Norway could do this, it was these people that is doing the application. And the board accepted it. And they sold recently, a couple of weeks ago, the company for 1.3 billion knocks, five years later. So for us, that is successful. So you never know, it's, you just have to kind of be, uh, agree upon the procedures for safeguarding the, the, the risk that is included in projects. But we have been around for since the war, since 55, I think. So we have had a lot of training of evaluating the risk of the companies. Mm. Okay. Yes. In the case of Uruguay, the programs are continuous. So you have firms that have three, four, five support by any grants. By any, in, in it's, it's, it's a, a challenge for us to capture the effect of these uh, firms. So we have panels of firms that, um, and we apply the innovation survey uh, that um, allow us to get information about innovative behavior and performance of the firm and about the. And about the risk of evaluation, um, I, I don't know what to say about this. Um, uh, I think it, it is, we have a lot of recommendations, but not 
uh, not uh, all of all of them are um, taking take into account for a new uh, program. For example, uh, last year we did an evaluation that have ten recommendations, but only one was for taking into account. Uh, and bueno, this is our uh, old challenge. Uh, it's a, <coughs> a question for both of you. Uh, when, when you go for counterfactuals, and uh, do you choose uh, control groups? If you choose, when do you use control groups? And if you use control groups, what what, what do you uh, choose as control groups? I mean, uh, rejected proposals, best rejected proposals. What what do you use? This is first question. And the second one, if uh, unders I understood that you have an uh, internal evaluation process and it's permanent, and uh, is there any kind of uh, quality control being thought to be adopted, I mean, for the evaluation you carried out? As a control, as a control group, we use uh, project research, uh, always, um, always. Uh, for entrepreneurship, um, that uh, the site of the treatment is so small, uh, maybe <laughs> we need to um, look uh, look for the control group in the universe of entrepreneurs. <laughs> it is difficult, but uh, we try. And do you go also go for primary data, I mean surveys uh, towards rejected proposals, and they, they respond? Yes. To the Thank yes. You. Okay. Well, we don't use uh, rejected uh, projects in our evaluation. They are, I'm sure they're in, because the control group is somebody that the Statistics Norway is picking out of not having been treated, supported. supported, but they don't know who has applied and not been supported, because that gives a bias, because. Uh, uh, we like to think that we reject the projects that is not good at the, at the start. So to, to use this group together with our results is wrong, we think. So there is a big, the, 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 the thing you can Google up in the net, there is a lot of, uh, lot of statistical information there, how they are choosing the companies and how they're dealing the control groups. So, but for Innovation Norway, we like to know uh, how we deal from a comp with for Statistics Norway who doesn't know actually who gives support and hasn't been tried to get support because that means that we were right if they don't perform. Maybe we had a good idea that they don't perform. So it is uh, a bias that is complicated. So we don't give Information Norway this information of companies that has not been supported by us uh, or applied and not get support. Yeah, yeah. But it's, uh, well, it's very more companies. We are 7,000 companies, so we are not supporting everybody every time. So it is, I think that they, they, they when they do the look-alike, I don't know exactly the methodology of doing a look-alike, but it is described in the paper <laughs> and how they do. Yes, well, it, yeah, I can give you, I have it one example with me, so I can give it to you, so you can go into it. Because it is interesting for us to have feedback from you also, how you evaluate, how we are measuring, and how we are doing these statistical things. Because we did this to uh, outsiders, not because to do it inside. We could have rented five brilliant statistics people in our own uh, premises and let them do the job, but then we wanted to have a distance to uh, not that they we could influence their decisions on their results. So there is this uh, kind of statistics bureau in Norway that is very, uh, very good on the methodology. And there has been a constant dialogue with Innovation Norway and the Research Council and this group to try to find the best uh, model. But I'm, I'm very curious about uh, your, <laughs> your findings on the data. Uh, yes. Yeah. Emma. I'm Renato, I'm a, a FNAP analyst, and I uh, would like to know how, regarding to the last question, how, you got, how your agents uh, deal with non-success cases, I mean, uh, invested projects that uh, end up in failure. Uh, 
do you have some knowledge that you'd like to share with us about you know failure process and stuff? Thanks. We uh, one of the funding programs. I think then you need to go into the various fund funding programs. Actually, we 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 are starting do it with entrepreneurs. We found that our very fund an entrepreneur he doesn't the, his probability of survival is not increasing but as we fund more there is also not reducing so we keep the quality of the the survival rate of the entrepreneurs but we need to go more into why how we can extend or improve the survival rate of the entrepreneurs that is a challenge that we have and we are fully aware of that and we are working on how to kind of get the better information and the other one is that we consider depends on what you call consider a success um, I have seen um, we are measuring commercial successes and technology successes and sometimes the technology successor are just migrating when the company is failing the technology is migrating to another company it is born up or, or, or changed. So it is very difficult to, to trace uh, the, the, the failures because they can end up in another company, in another technology, even another sector that they haven't thought that this technology could be used in medical equipment as they have been, been failing in the oil and gas sector. So it, it is very difficult. But that is how we want to improve our measuring, uh, measuring uh, performance systems. Yes, yes. I, it is very <laughs> difficult to define what is a sex in, in a program. Uh, um, I, th I think that um, uh, evaluation, impact evaluation, uh, may, uh, maybe um, uh, um, allow to um, say something about uh, variables, outcome variables, but uh, uh, it's difficult to capture spillovers. For example, um, the, sur the export server, we capture that 90% um, of the firm has uh, increased her uh, skills and uh, for, the f for the person that um, we participate in the project. And these results are important too. Yes, I think. I just want to comment, and that is, well, I've been around for a while. I was uh, walking around in Norway before our oil and gas technology company is there, and I've seen uh, being able to develop technology in itself is a value. So that is also something to, to consider. Actually, the, just the, the general generation of technology environments is a value in itself. So in that respect, it's difficult to see failures because the space program is not measured by how many people is uh, living on the moon. It, it is another, it's, it is different. So you have also to take up the wider uh, impacts, I think, on general high technology level in, in the industry. Edson yeah. Watanabe, uh, I'm a director of COPE, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, first, I would like to make a comment. It's very uh, nice to have Uruguay and Norway in this uh, table. First, if you look at the Global Innovation Index, Brazil is in the seventh position, and Uruguay is, I think, uh, fifth or sixth, so it's better than Brazil. So. It's a good representation. Uh, with the Norway, I have a comment and a question. A comment is that I read the paper saying that, uh, this paper was saying that uh, confidence between people is something very important for innovation, for instance. And Norway is in the top. Uh, unfortunately, Brazil is the last in the bottom. Uh, my question, because to th this morning there were something about corruption and some other things, but uh, nothing about the trust. What do you think uh, the effect of trust between people and innovation? Is there a relation? Make a very simple answer, say yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's, <laughs> it's, it's uh, fortunately, that is the advantage of a small country because you meet everybody on your way up and you meet on your way down. So it is better to behave nice all the time. So uh, trust is, in, especially in our, when our clusters are such a f central point of our industrial development because between the partners, trust is everything. If you have to solve problems by opening the, the law books and bringing the lawyers, you have lost. That is not what clusters are about. Yeah. Interessante. E vamos ter agora uma pausa para o café e depois damos sequência ao, ao evento. Muito obrigado.